Now, for those of you who watched my Brexit prediction on my previous vlog, or if you've just been following British politics, you will know that we have left the European Union. Highly controversial, tumultuous events all change in British politics. Now, while some of you are thinking, thank God for Nigel Farage, he's brought us into Independence Day, others of you are thinking, oh gosh, this man's caused a catastrophe. But I think whichever the side of the fence you're on in terms of Mr. Farage, you will be interested to know what his astrological chart has to say about him and how one man caused an earthquake in British and European politics. Now, when I first heard about Nigel Farage, I think it must have been back in 2002 when he used to come on the James Whale Show on TalkSport Radio. Now, in those days, I think it was the only gig he could get, and he would come on, not necessarily alongside, but some of the other guests would be people like David Icke or Alex Jones of Infowars.com. You guys will remember him. And he was quite out there. And what he was saying then about the EU and maybe it's not such a good idea, it wasn't a concept that many people really related to or cared about at that stage. But roll on 2009 to the European elections and suddenly UKIP, which is the party that uh, Nigel Farage spearheaded, is getting votes, getting a lot of votes in the European Parliament. Then we roll on to 2010 elections, general election, again the amount of support for UKIP is increasing. We go on to the 2014 European elections and UKIP becomes the largest party in the UK which is quite outstanding really from absolutely zero to garnering that much support. Then 3.8 million votes in the general election which basically forced David Cameron to give in to his backbenchers and have a referendum. Yes sure Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, um, Gisela Stewart and others popped on the bandwagon later on. They might have had their concerns and they definitely played their role in the Leave campaign later on. But it was actually Nigel Farage who started it. He was the one from the beginning who was agitating and building up this momentum. This whole phenom phenomenon really is down to him, down to one person. And I really am intrigued to know what is in the chart of one man who can basically create such events that have got everyone in this country really, really wound up for all sorts of different reasons. Um, a friend of mine was saying that perhaps UKIP can go on now and become a, a bigger party, but they'd have to get rid of Nigel. And I thought, well, that's like Top Gear getting rid of Jeremy Clarkson. You can't really, if you get rid of, of them, the whole thing kind of goes flat. That's how much the whole UKIP phenomenon is about Nigel Farage. He's bigger than the party. He's bigger than the, his political aims. He's become a massive figure. So. Let's have a look and see what it is in his chart. Now, I do have, luckily, a birth time for Nigel Farage. He's born on the 3rd of April, 1964, and his birth time is 4.30pm. So, from what I've seen in the chart, that looks kind of accurate. But, uh, you know, when you haven't spoken to someone's mum, you're not always quite sure how accurate the birth time is. But this is looking good to me. So, here it is. And the most interesting thing that I honed in right on, right away, was the Uranus and Pluto rising in, um, in Virgo, all right? And what you also have here is he has Mars, the Sun, and Jupiter, all in the eighth, eighth house in Aries. Now, the thing about Aries, which everyone out there, if you have an Aries in your family or you know an Aries, the thing about them is if you want them to do something, the best thing to do is to tell them that you don't think they can do it. You don't believe in them or tell them they can't do it because boy, nothing inspires an Aries like that. They will spend the rest of their life trying to prove you wrong. And I think this is what has driven Nigel Farage on. He is strongly Aries. And when he went to the European Parliament and gave that that speech and he said, oh, you all laughed at me, you aren't laughing now. Yeah, well, I think every time he had a put down, it sort of spurred him on because that's very much the airy spirit. They are fighters. They love to get the bit between their teeth and go for it. Aries also quite thick skinned and I think they can take quite a lot of opposition coming at them. It doesn't really affect them. Now, 
Because Nigel Farage, he's got Mars in Aries, and Mars is very strong when it's placed in Aries rather than the other signs. Sun in Aries is strong, particularly in the 8th house, because the 8th house has a Scorpio overtone, and Scorpio's co-ruler is Mars. Plus you've got fire planet Jupiter also in Aries. So that's like a treble whammy of this whole fearless, pugnacious, airy spirit that's going to fight till the end, that's not going to be deterred, and that's not always going to be very diplomatic. But the thing that interests me as well is the Pluto rising in Virgo. Because now that says he is an agent of change. He's an agent provocateur. All these eighth house planets plus Pluto rising, if you want to look at it there and I've got it kind of annotated there, that's what gives him this power to create change and to drive forward. He is an immensely decisive person. Uh, he doesn't suffer fools gladly. I wouldn't really want to get on the wrong side of him. He makes up his mind and he's absolutely single-minded and incredibly determined. The whole Pluto in Virgo says to me, very methodical, extremely good with facts and figures. As we know, he's an extremely powerful debater. Uh, he doesn't mince his words. You know, you say don't put too fine a point on it. He actually sometimes goes too far when he wants to really nail home a point. He's not that worried about diplomacy and also what it says to me there the Pluto rising is extremely divisive you know people people love him and think he's a force for good things other people feel very very differently he is divisive but very effective the fact that he has got Uranus right near the ascendant tells me all about politics the fact that he's a disruptor he's anti-establishment he's very keen on pushing for change he has his Venus right up near the mid-heaven, which says to me that he can be diplomatic if he wants to. That's when you see him in the pub and he's chatting to people and he has that, I'm a regular guy man in the pub, I'm not part of the establishment, I'm different, I'm one of the small guys. That's where you see that coming through. What I'm quite interested in when I look back is when people have Pluto on the Ascendant, especially when they've got so many planets in the eighth house, like Mr. Farage, there's this kind of life-death struggle. These people will go through many very distinct phases within their life. And I read that um, Mr. Farage had a very serious accident when he was younger. He, he was very badly damaged leg and arm, nearly had his arm amputated, spent almost six months recovering, which again shows this kind of fighting spirit. And it shows that Plutonian theme of having these near, almost near-death experiences and this ability to reinvent himself and this thing of just never quitting. I believe he's also survived testicular cancer and many of you may have forgotten but really the drama represented by his chart. He had a plane crash on the day of the 2010 elections. Uh, he walked away from it looking a bit tattered and torn. It was a light aircraft crash in Buckinghamshire but I think that just shows to you the drama of this man's chart. He has a plane crash on election day. So as I say this is I was really interested and intrigued to have a look at the chart and to see such powerful influences and I think that again I talked about how Pluto had so much to do with this referendum and the changes the UK is going through right now, a kind of rebirth and it seems appropriate to me that a man with Pluto and the 8th house influences of Scorpio so strongly represented in his chart is the person who's been the driving force behind this tumultuous change. Uh, this is someone who is driven by work. He has Saturn in Aquarius in the sixth house, definitely a sign of a workaholic. He loves his work. The fact that Virgo is on the ascendant uh, with Pluto says to me something else which I've noticed about him. Whereas the other politicians, you always see them going to the polling station with their wives, they make more of their families. You'll never ever see Mr. Farage with his wife. When he arrives at the polling station, he's alone. He's almost protects his family. I didn't even realize he had four children because he's kind of uh, kept that very, very separate from his political life. Okay, where to now for Mr. Farage? Not clear really, is it? If he's not the leader of UKIP, it's a little bit like a queen without Freddie Mercury. So, it'll be interesting to see where he carves a role for himself. 
he's not, he's sort of on the sidelines as he's not in the Conservative Party, so he won't be having much to do with the Brexit negotiations. But this man, he loves his work. He's absolutely driven by his work, driven by politics. Don't think you're going to forget about him because he's not going anywhere.